This is Dr. Frederick. I'm going to just talk a little bit about uh, getting a critical value of F. And uh, if you have Excel, you can do this. Let me just type in the uh, the formula here. We're going to uh, pick this uh, formula. You know how to use Excel. We want for the problem I'm going to show you later. We're going to start with what a, what is the probability we're looking at 0.01. The degrees of freedom in the numerator is 2 and the denominator is 18. And it gives us a critical value of 6.01. Let's just look online. We can look at F calculators. Um, critical value. Okay. And it would help if you didn't misspell calculator. So, um, I've looked at some of these. Some of these are not any good, but uh, let's uh, let's go to Vassar stats real quick and look at a table. If you know how to use a table, you know you can figure these out. You don't always have a table with you. It's not always um, obvious. But here is degrees of freedom in the numerator is two for the problem and 18 for the problem and, and what is lightly shaded is 0.05 and what is bolded is 0.01 so you can get your critical value by looking at a table let's go back to this again I think this was a, a helpful calculator right so you know we can just put in here 0.01 put in 2 and put in 18. And this is the way that you would typically do it anymore. If you have a computer, you have the internet, you're going to get this value 6.01. Uh, you can always get values like this out of Excel. But here's the point. They, they were discovered or derived long ago before computers existed. And people made tables uh, with them and people looked up the tables, but but see, you don't look up tables much anymore. You just go online, find things, and and that's how I would do it. We would just go on and want to know the critical value. And in fact, I don't ever do it at all. Uh, I use statistical packages that you know they'll just tell you what the value is if you need to know. Nobody cares what the critical value is in practice. We're always depending on a value called p which tells us a probability that that value or higher would be observed in a distribution in which the null hypothesis was known to be true. That's what we really care about. And so we have a cutoff point of 0.05. If 5% of the time or less uh, the obtained value would occur if the null hypothesis is true. We just reject the null hypothesis. We don't care what the critical value of F or T or anything is, um, but we, we want to know the probability of getting that value if the null hypothesis is true. And uh, so we just leave that step out. When you're starting to understand these things, you have to understand that there is a point of comparison which is called this critical value. What's the critical value of F here? It's if we had a distribution uh, of data in which we knew the null hypothesis were true and we pulled F, you know, we just sampled out of that population endlessly forever. One percent of the time we would find F values of 6.01 or higher. And uh, so that's what that means.